Okay, so yeah, so we were just going through um, Paul writing about the difference between the the old covenant, the new covenant, and uh, you know some of the stark differences, uh, disting distinguishing um, you know factors that he's writing about. So, so he's while he's talking about uh, the ministry. And he starts by saying that hey, we are we are the ministers of the new covenant, and uh, we are ministers. Uh, we ministered. Uh, uh, Christ actually is the one who wrote the, that epistle, uh, epistle of you know the work of transformation of people, um, whatever he did in your life. So you are an epistle of Christ, and from there he goes on to that we are actually ministers of the new covenant and. Because he's talking about how the ministry or the work that they did was by the ink of the Holy Spirit, right? And uh, and goes on to talk about how uh, the Spirit gives life and uh, the letter uh, kills. The Spirit gives life. So he's talking about the, uh, you know, uh, about the work of the Holy Spirit in the new covenant, and and then he goes on to talk about the both the, the differences, right? So so he's saying, you know, this old covenant. Uh, it's called the, the ministry of death he referred to right so saying the old covenant and the new covenant the old covenant is a ministry of death whereas the new covenant is a ministry of the spirit uh, the old covenant is a ministry of condemnation so all these terms is using to to talk about you know um, the difference like here the new covenant is a ministry of righteousness um, the old covenant the glory was passing away and here it is what remains or what stays on right so um so in in all these that that is what we see in all these verses and then from verse 12 says that we have such hope okay because of all this we have such hope and therefore we use great boldness of speech right so there is great assurance we have so much of hope because we are in this new dispensation because it's this new covenant and uh and it's so much more glorious and so we use great boldness of speech, unlike Moses, who put a veil to hide the glory because people saw the glory, but they didn't want anything to do with it. And his face was shining and he put a veil. And that glory was also something that faded. It did not remain. So this uh, is something that remains the, the glory of uh, the work of God, the glory of God, and something that remains in the hearts and lives of people because people can see it. You're like an epistle, you're like a letter. Right, and um, so saying, you know, referring to the, the the Old Testament, the people in the Old Testament, or typically the you know, particularly the Jewish um, Jewish people, he's saying to this day, right, um, their minds was blinded. So to this day, there remains a veil. He's using that imagery of Moses using that veil um, to to cover his face and to hide the glory uh, or hide the glory which was because the shining that was uh, his face was shining because of the glory of god uh, and to hide it he put the veil so similarly even today um, there is a veil which hides the glory right? because their minds are blinded so there is a veil which remains unlifted he says verse 14 it remains unlifted whenever the the, the scriptures are being read, right? Whenever there's a reading of the Old Testament, it says, because that veil is taken away in Christ Jesus alone. Right? So um, that's Second Corinthians um, two and uh, fourteen, right? Or sorry, uh, that's three, three and fourteen. Just one second. Um, yeah. So the there is a kind of blindness, and that veil remains unlifted. Right? So he's saying, even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil is on their heart. So they're not able to see because the old actually is pointing to Christ, pointing to the Messiah. But because their minds are blinded and they're not un unwilling to receive the truth, there is a there is a veil on their heart. Nevertheless, you know, he, he explains about how that veil is taken away. When one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away, right? So only when a person turns to the Lord, there is that whatever is covering, whatever is preventing us from actually seeing God for who he is, um, 
that prevention or that cover is taken away. When one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away, right? Um, and then verse 17 and 18, now the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty or there is freedom. Right? And when when we talk about freedom, it, it's not talking about you know any kind of freedom or freedom to you know commit uh, whatever you want or live however you want. So it's, it's talking about legitimate freedom, freedom that is uh, that is doing the right things. Right. So when one turns to the Lord, so the veil is taken away, and uh, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is a freedom, there is liberty. Right? Um, and we all with unveiled face so we've all turned to the lord now that whatever was preventing us whatever was like a barrier uh was taken away and we with unveiled face when we behold in the as in a mirror when we see as we you know see ourselves in a mirror uh when we behold the glory of the lord that when we continue to do that we are beholding the glory of god maybe in the reading of scriptures now we are beholding because beholding the glory of the Lord, because the veil is taken away, right? Uh, we have turned to the Lord. So unveiled face, uh, whether it's in worship, reading of the word, prayer, when we be and having an encounter with God, and when we behold the glory of God, it says there's something that's happening. Now, we are being transformed into that same image, from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. So, so he's talking about transformation. Again, if you read it in context from the beginning of uh, of the verse, beginning of the chapter, chapter three, and um, uh, about his reference to the epistle, and you are our epistle, written uh, not with ink, but by the ink of the Holy Spirit, by the by the work of the Holy Spirit, and so on. So here is is talking about, of course, life being transformed, and he's saying, how did, does it happen, right? Because it is when you turn to the Lord. And with unveiled face, that veil is taken away. And with unveiled face, we continue to behold, right, gaze upon the glory of God. So this beholding is a, is a continuing thing. Right? Uh, when that happens, when you continue to behold, which means to study, observe, examine, look into right, the glory of God, then what is happening is that there is a continuous change when you continue to behold there is because he says being transformed right we are being transformed something that is continuous something that is ongoing so when we continue to behold beholding as in a mirror the glory of god we are being transformed so it's not a one time thing it's a regular thing it's something that happens through life um and there is a continuous transformation that happens as we behold the glory of god Right, so he's saying we are being transformed into that same image, and the Greek word used there is icon, uh, which means figure or likeness. Right, we are changed into that same icon, uh, same figure, same likeness, and that change is again transformed. Right, Trans the word used there, it's a radical change, transfigured from one form to another. So the word you transform is used. So, so that is happening from glory, from one level of glory to another level of glory. Which is, which is what is possible in this new covenant, in this new dispensation, where the old pointed to what was right, kept us, guarded us as long as we lived according to it, but could not bring life uh, because it brought death. It showed the inability of man. But praise be to God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he has empowered us to live a righteous life. Right. So that is what we see in chapter 3. Okay, so um, any um, any questions here before we move on to the next one? Anything that um, any thoughts that um, that you have to share about chapter three? Right. So, uh, so because of this revelation, and uh, and we see that yes, Paul had this. Um, uh, Paul has his understanding because he's, he knew the letters, right? He was trained to be a Pharisee. He knew the letters. He knew what, where it could take, take a person. And he also knew beyond that, it was impossible. Beyond that, it, it was impossible because, because he tried. You know, he said, according to the law, 
you know, he tried everything, but there was no righteousness, true righteousness, uh, which righteousness which is only by faith. He writes that in Romans. Um, so righteousness by faith, um, righteousness comes by faith. Right? So um, that is something that he experienced. So he experienced both the worlds, and so he's able to. Uh, you know, by the Holy Spirit, he is able to um, write down about the distinctions and the, and the you know the differences between the vast difference which is there and how that difference is taken away. Or if someone who's in the you know, Old Testament or who's living according to the Old Covenant, who according to the law, according to the letters, when they come, when they turn to the Lord, that covering is taken away and. What is even more glorious is that we get to be, I'm sorry, we get to behold the glory of God. And because we are continuously beholding or making an attempt to intentionally look, observe, investigate, we see that we are being continuously transformed. There is a transformation that's happening. Um, and that transformation is not uh, to any you know, any noble person or any earthly figure, but it's the image of God himself. It is Christ-likeness. The transformation is unto Christ-likeness, and that is possible for everyone who turns to the Lord, right? Everyone who beholds the glory of God, which means making oneself available and intentionally going after, seeking and pursuing God, and this transformation uh, happens, right, at a very deep level, at a radical level. Uh, change that too, right? So that is something that we see here. Right? So it's um, yeah, so it's interesting to read through the first few verses and you know, how Paul brings about this thing, right? You know, um, presents this, um, and also the whole thing of that uh, uh, of the ministry of the, the 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 power behind the ministry or the ability. To minister in these, you know, he's saying that that competency, that fitness, it comes from the Lord, and right? our sufficiency is from God, right? Okay. Uh, if there are no further questions, I mean, if there are no questions, we can move on to chapter four. Okay. Right. Okay. So let's look at chapter four. Chapter four begin to read from verse 1 onwards. Therefore, since we have this ministry, we have, as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart. But we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness, not handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But even... If our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should, should shine on them. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your born servants for Jesus' sake. For it is God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Okay. So he's saying, you know, therefore we have, uh, verse 1, since we have received this, we have this ministry, we have received mercy. Right? As we have received mercy, uh, compassion and pity and so on. So we have received this. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Okay. Therefore, we do not, we are not discouraged in any way. We don't become weary. We are not discouraged. Um, in, in our, the old English says we don't faint, right? So, which means uh, we don't become exhausted. We don't become weary. Um, we are not you know, spiritless, right? Why? Because of, um, because of this reason. And the reason being that we have this mercy, we have received mercy, we have this this kind of ministry, right? this glorious ministry. So we don't lose heart. Right? Um, and then he says, "We have, but we have renounced the hidden things of shame, 
right? We don't walk in craftiness. Um, so he's talking about, you know, uh, the fact that this encouragement is something which is real, which is something tangible. Now the question is, you know, is there a, will there be reasons for discouragement or cause for discouragement? Yes, right. But he's saying we don't lose heart because you know we have this. This is what we are reminded of: the kind of ministry, the glorious ministry, the work of the Holy Spirit. What we have been changed, we are being continuously changed into, right? So we don't lose heart. So considering that, yeah, there is no there is no reason for discouragement. There is no reason for weariness. Right, so he says, uh, "I don't. We have experienced the mercy of God. We ex we are in the new covenant, right? Um, and we have also renounced." He says, "But we have renounced the hidden things of shame, um, not walking in craftiness, not handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience." So, so the thing is that um, you know, as a minister of God, it is possible. So that is what he's, you know, he's saying. You know, we are not doing it, right? but it is possible that one can actually handle the word of God. One can walk in craftiness, right? Um, so, and he says uh, uh, that is verse two, right? Um, yeah. So, verse two. So is is renounced, which means given up, right? We, in fact, it, it means a stronger word. It means to forbid, right? So we have given up, but we are not walking, walking in cunningness. Right? We are not walking in, in human cunning nature. We are not walking in uh, in a negative light. If you see, you know, it's it's not. We're not walking in cunningness. We're not walking in craftiness or or you know, trickery. We don't do that. So that is something for us to understand that you know, in the ministry, in the name of ministry, in the name of sharing christ you know in the name of the gospel we cannot indulge in these kind of things you know it can be very subtle as uh, you know some of the things that we do in ministry some of the things we say uh, uh, when it comes to ministering you know some of the appeals that we make to people um, maybe it's an altar call or you know, whatever you know whatever way we are ministering um, you know, maybe it's an appeal to give into the ministry, whatever it is, right? There cannot be craftiness, right? So he's saying, you know, we do not, you know, we have we we have renounced it. We do not walk in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. Okay, not handling the word of God. So handling the word of God meaning, you know, sharing the word and and living according to the word, teaching the word, right? So we don't handle it deceitfully we don't do it uh, deceitfully right so um so deceitfully meaning uh, something that is um of of a lie something that is of a deception so we don't do it in a deceitfully in deceitful manner so right and then it says that um but by manifestation of the truth right so manifestation of the truth putting to display Manifestation, you know, it's an outward, tangible, putting on display. Right? So, a manifestation of the truth. Okay. What else? Commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Okay. In this manner, we commend ourselves to every man's conscience. Right? So, this is the kind of ministry. We don't use any kind of craftiness. We handle the God of, word of God. Uh, not in a deceitful manner, but in a truthful manner, and uh, by manifestation of truth, we commend ourselves. Right? We put on display truth at all times, speech, word, action. There is truth, right? So, the word of God does not change the way we live our life. It does it is not something that is watered down or compromised, um, but it is. This is how we handle the word of god this is how we minister right and we he says we come we, by manifestation of the truth we commend ourselves right it's a it's it is what commends us or recommends us to every man's conscience right so he's talking about an abro above reproach life that he and his team are living and ministering right so something that's above reproach um so that is again you know very commendable so verse 3 
But even if a gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. So even if it is, if it, if the gospel is covered, right, it is, bec it is because um, yeah, it is covered to those who are perishing because they have not turned to the Lord, right. And he also says that. So this is something which is a reality, right? So it's, we know it's a spiritual battle. We know it's a spiritual stronghold. It's uh, it's more than just logic and reason. But he says that whose minds, the God of this age, referring to Satan, right? Whose mind the God of this age has blinded or obscured. And therefore, they do not believe, right? Lest the light of the gospel, uh, of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. So we also, you know, again, um, look at the here is, is mentioning the deity of Christ, who is the image of God, the icon of God, the figure of God Himself, the light of the gospel, um, to the glory of Christ. Verse four, um, who is the image? Christ, who is the image of God? Christ, who is the very image of icon or figure of God, should uh, the glory should shine on them. Right. So, so there is that battle, and we know that um, the eyes are opened when one turns to the Lord. So that is also a decision, right? So, um, when or when a proof is given, when when uh, when hearts are uh, convicted, when when intentionally someone does not even then give in or willfully holds on, then the blindness remains, right? But because he says, who do not believe. Right. But when one believes from the heart, um, then that blindness is lifted. And uh, well, the Lord it says that God who commanded light to shine of, out of darkness will shine in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God. So all this happens um, in the ministering. All this happens to the recipients of the gospel The, the in their heart. The light of the knowledge of the glory of God is shining like a bright light, right? and he's, he's referring to the very, um, you know, very creation itself uh, in the beginning, where he, the Lord, spoke and it was so. He says, "Who commanded light to shine out of darkness?" Right? Okay. Um, right. Okay. So here he's he's saying he uses the 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 word that. Referring to themselves, in verse five he says, "We do not preach ourselves." Right? So, which means we don't preach about ourselves or our accomplishments or whatever. We don't preach. We don't highlight or focus on ourselves, but Christ Jesus, the Lord. Okay, and who are we? We are born servants for the um, your born servants for Jesus' sake, right? Excuse me. Right. So, bond servant, which means, and the word used there is a slave, like a bond servant. You know, he's bonded, uh, like for life, uh, to serve. He's given uh, uh, for whatever reason. You know. So this is during those times when bond servants was, um, you know, people used to have bond servants, or they was they were made bond servants and so on. So, saying, you know, we are like that. We are bond servants, right? servants of Jesus. Servants, uh, your bond servants for Jesus' sake. Okay. okay. Um, so the thing is, is also he's just revealing his heart. Who are we like? What are we like in our ministering? What are we like in our, in our interactions and so on? Right. So uh, this is who we are. Right. Okay. Um, anything else that we need to see? Here? Yeah. Okay. Okay, let's look at verse seven. Okay. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. Again, he's talking about the kind of ministry and everything that. So, let's just read through. Um, we are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus 
also may be manifested in a mortal flesh. So then death is working in us, but life in you. And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. We also believed and therefore speak. Knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that grace, having spread through the many, may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. So he says, start by saying, we have this treasure. Right? We have this wealth, this great wealth in earthen vessels. Right? So he's reminding, hey, we are earthen vessels. We are made out of the ground. Everything that we have in us, we are we are fragile, we are earthen vessels, we are, you know, there it has an expiry date, etc. We are so, but we have this treasure, right? We have this treasure in us, which is the, the wonder working power of the Holy Spirit. You know, we are carriers of the presence of God, we are carriers of the, the, the indwelling presence of God and the power of God. So we have this great wealth. We have this treasure of great value, but it's, you know, we carry it even though outwardly we are earthen vessels, right? <clears throat> and then it goes on to talk about the ministry. You know, we are hard pressed on every side. This is the thing that we are going through. We are facing pressure, hard pressed, right? We are facing pressure, uh, pressure filled. Uh, environments and situations uh, we are yet we are not crushed there is a lot of pressure yet we are not crushed we are perplexed which means okay we, we don't know what to do but not in despair we are persecuted but not forsaken we are struck down but not destroyed so so this is what is happening this is the reality of the kind of ministry life and ministry that is that we are in, in indulged in, we are engaged in. Right? There is pressure, but we are not crushed. Uh, we are, yes, there are times when we are perplexed, but we are not in despair. Right? We are persecuted, but not forsaken. We are struck down you know, re repeatedly, but not destroyed. Why? It says, carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus. Right? We carry about in our body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our body. Okay, so so that uh, life of Jesus is some uh, is something which is apart from just biological life. It is Zoe, which is the God kind of life. That this life, the Zoe of Jesus, may be manifested, may be put on display in our body. So whatever the life of God does and changes and brings about you know internally and and even in the physical body right um so we carry about the the dying of the lord jesus you know we carry which means that um you know the the death the whole aspect of death what we were we were what we were dead to you know we carry about in our body and right? what he what he carried and he died you know we carry it uh, we are dead to that that the life of Jesus may also be manifested, right? So, um, verse 11, But we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our mortal flesh. So, you know, the kind of injustice, the kind of uh, persecution, the kind of physical suffering, and all that they went through. And he's saying, you know, we, 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 we went through this. Right. And but even as we were delivered to death, right, that verdict of death is there. There's no, you know, sometimes it's like, okay, this is what is it is. You know, we are persecuted, we are put in prison, and the verdict has been passed, and and so on. And it seems that we will be, you know, physically even executed. Right, that is that we'll be made as martyrs for the sake of the kingdom, and so on. So we face that possibility. We face that. Right. Even as we are delivered, it says that the Zoe of God, the life of God, life of Jesus, may also be manifested. Right. We are we are done, we are we are delivered, 
But in the very situation, the life of Jesus may be manifested, put on display in our mortal flesh. You know, we we see that you know in um, in the Philippian uh, in, in Philippi in the in the prison, we see that the life of God being manifest, and 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 uh, there was a breakthrough and there was transformation. Right, so we see over and over again, and Paul writing and testifying, and he's saying, you know, he, in the book of Acts, towards the end, we see that even the Caesar, uh, the the, I'm sorry, in the household of Caesar, he says uh, there are many who had actually come to the saving knowledge. So you see the life of Jesus, the the Zoe of God, the God kind of life, touching them, even them, because even in the imprisonment, even in the in the phase of death of the physical. The the Zoe God kind of life touching the people, right? So he says, yeah, death is working in us, but life in you, and we have the same spirit of faith. We have the same spirit of faith, uh, same faith according to the scriptures, um, and so we have the same spirit of faith. I believed, therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak, right? So we speak, we share this because we have this same. Faith. We believe in our heart. We are out of the conviction. We speak, right? And I'm um, uh, saying, knowing that He who raised up Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus, and will present us with you, right? So, all things are for your sakes. Um, and He's saying, grace spreading through the many may cause thanksgiving to abound. And even as people, more and more people experience the grace of, grace of God. There is this abundant thanksgiving which which is being poured out and which is being offered abounds to the glory of God. Right. So he's saying that uh, all these things that we are going through is for your sake, for the sake of not not just the Corinthian church, but for the sake of the people. Right. It's for your sake um, because you know we know that it was you know these letters were just read everywhere and it applied to them everywhere as well as every believer. So he's saying for the sake of the of the church. Okay. Um, therefore, we do not lose heart. So that's verse sixteen. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Again, meaning we do not become discouraged. We do not give up. So, so whenever we encounter the word, you know, therefore, it's good to see what is he referring to. So, therefore, it's it's in conclusion to everything that we have addressed before. In conclusion to everything that I. You know, discussed before, right? So uh, he says this here. Therefore, we uh, since um, you know uh, in in verse one, he again uses that. Therefore, referring to the covenant, the, the new covenant, and uh, you know that we are ministers of the new covenant, and how glorious the new covenant is. And he says, therefore, we do not lose heart. So here also he says, therefore, we do not. Lose heart, referring to, you know, we have this treasure. This we have the Zoe God kind of life in our hearts, and we have, uh, you know, wherever, even in pressure-filled, death-like situations where we are, we have the sentence of death. Even there, the the Zoe of God, the God kind of life, is put on display, touching, changing uh, every person, and it'll, you know, he says that. This Zoe, God kind of life, will also, you know, give uh, life to our mortal bodies, which means that even when we go through that kind of difficulty and, and suffering, you know, it it energizes us, gives life to our mortal bodies. Right? So therefore, we do not lose heart. Right? He's saying, even though our outward man is perishing, right? We know that. That's the reality. That's the reality of the world that we live in. That there is corruption, decay, and we know that at one point in time, uh, we need to leave this earthly tent, right? So, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. So there is something that is opposite opposite of that that is happening, because they are, you know, Paul is saying, you know, he's ministering in this way, he's uh, uh, beholding the glory of God. And all that Zoe God kind of life is in us. And so, yes, the inward man is being renewed day by day. So this is a possibility. And this is a reality that we as believers can walk in. So he's saying we, we don't have to lose heart. 
right? Even though out outwardly they could be changed, they could be changed for the, for the worse, right? Um, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. And verse 17, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Okay, so he's, he's referring to this, this whole thing, this physical persecution and tribulation and being put in jail and all the distress and the pressure-filled situations that he's going through. So he's, you know, in the light of eternity, right, it is but a light affliction, you know, something that is something that is not heavy and something that we joyfully go through right, in the in comparison to the eternal weight of glory. So um, it's working out for us uh, far exceeding an eternal weight of glory. And um, and so he's saying, you know, while we look, we do not look at things which are seen, but at things which are not seen. You know, you see the, uh, I mean, it seems almost like a paradox, right? We look, which means with your eyes, right? vision, something that you see, right? So he says, we do not look at things which are seen, but we look at things which are not seen. How can you look at things which are not visible? So he's obviously referring to things that are eternal, things that are spiritual in nature, the reality of the 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 world that we live in. You know, we live in two worlds. We live in the physical world, physical realm. We also live in the spiritual realm. A spiritual realm is that of faith. A spiritual realm is that of the the work of the Holy Spirit, the power and of and the presence of God. Right. So God is spirit, and so the spiritual realm. Uh, you know, we are one spirit with the Lord, and and a lot transpires, a lot of transactions happens, right, from His spirit to our spirit, and so on. So we live in the reality of the spirit realm, of the spiritual realm as well. So saying we, while we look, we do not look at things which are seen. So saying our focus right, is not on the temporal. Our focus is not on the things that are of which which are you know natural, right? It doesn't mean that we're not going to see or we're not going to uh, we're not going to be aware of it. Okay, but that word used there, you know, it means to observe, to contemplate. In in fact, it also means to take aim, right? So he's talking about a a, a focus, right? We don't look at. The things which are seen. So we we don't fix our eyes, we don't take aim, we don't you know like focus and contemplate um, on the natural. Like you're saying on things that are natural. Um, we don't we don't we move away from that, but we focus on things which are of the spirit, which are of faith, which are of the spiritual realm. We focus on that. And then he goes on to say, for the things which are seen are temporary. And the things which are not seen, they are the ones that are eternal. Okay, so it's a great revelation. You know, and, and he's saying, and therefore, we don't lose heart. Right? So he, all the things that he's saying before is talking about the the reality of the new life, the reality of the Zoe God kind of life, and so on, which is a treasure, which is of great value, and and also even if the physical is is fading, right, physical is perishing, the outward man is perishing, the inward man is being renewed day by day, and that is what it really matters because one day the outward man will be laid rest, put to rest to the earth, but the inward man will continue on to eternity, right? Will have eternal life and and receive glorified body. So all this, so he's saying we don't lose heart. And so he's also explaining um, this is why we don't lose heart. So he's saying we, we look at things, the things that are seen, things that you can see with our eyes, you know, physical sense, um, visible that you look around, these are temporary. These are temporal in nature. But the things that are unseen, the things that are referring to the spirit, the spiritual things, now these are eternal. These are long lasting. This the life of that is more than uh, the lifespan of that 
is far more than what is of the of, of the natural or the physical right it, it outweighs that it goes beyond that overtakes that and goes that so he's saying you know, the things that are seen not seen are eternal okay so so it, uh, in a way you know he's he's talking about you know this is our focus as ministers of god this is our focus as ministers of God, you know, right from chapter three, we see this is as ministers of God. This is this is what it is. You are the epistle. As ministers of God, we are the ministers of the new covenant, uh, which is a much more glorious. It is not of the letter, but of the spirit. And we use, you know, we don't use natural means or methods. We don't rely on them, but we rely on the work of the Holy Spirit because He writes with the, the ink of the Holy Spirit. You know, we, we even though we minister, we minister with the ink of the Holy Spirit, and on tablets of um, the flesh of the heart right? not tablets of stone and and so on and uh, and how there is transformation as we with unveiled face we look on we behold the glory of God so we saw that it's a continuous thing we continue to look uh, at, at the glory of God and there we continue to change we are continuing to be transformed from from glory to glory so uh, we don't lose heart because of all this. And again, he says, we don't lose heart because uh, even though the natural, the physical is there, very much there, but it, we know it is temporal, but we are aware and our focus is on the things that are um, of eternity. Right? Okay, so um, any questions here? I'm sure there should be something or some thoughts from whatever you know we see shared here. Okay. Pastor, can I yeah. ask? Yeah. So, so uh, this is about keeping our uh, mind focused on eternal things. So, in our natural day-to-day -day life, we have we face so many struggles, Pastor. And yeah. God tells us, like you know, this is how you have to be. And then we hear the Holy Spirit's voice clearly. But then the surrounding situations and everything throughout that day or even the next day or even that week will be completely opposite to what we hear from God. But still we hear from God, you know, God, you just have to be this way. So at that time, how do we deal with the natural things? Because natural is something that we really see. That is the fact. But mm -hmm. Holy Spirit is strongly guiding us and, you know, speaking to us. This is how you should be. So even though we might have the means or something like, you know, to act on our own or like the uh, how others go, mm -hmm. but sometimes God, not always, I'm not talking this, it's, it doesn't happen always, mm -hmm. but certain situations, like certain seasons, like God just ties us up faster and we can't do also because he puts the barricades. So when we face the natural world, you know, they don't know actually what we are facing, but then they question us and like, you know, how should we answer pastor? Because God, you know, we, they might not be able to understand what we are going through. Mm. Also, they are concerned about us because they are maybe part of our own family or external mm. relatives. But uh, to them, we can't tell, <laughs> tell you mm. know, what we are going through now, pastor. So how should we respond to them or be in submission and humility when it comes to those matters, pastor? Right, right. So um, this constant struggle of the natural uh, and the spiritual the struggle, as in the reality of living in the natural, and also the reality of you know things of the spirit uh, or the spiritual realm that influence and even affect the natural. So, so for us, one thing is you know if you look at Paul, you know some of the things that he faced, the struggles that he went through, it is he says it's a very pressure filled. It is something that fills our senses. Day in and day out, you know, being in prison, being imprisoned, uh, the reality of hey, losing our life, and and for what, you know, the, those questions, and and, uh, and the fact that, you know, uh, I'm sure they must have faced many, many questions and many, many well-meaning people also, you know, his colleagues maybe of the past, uh, people who trained with him, you know, his, uh, I don't know, his alumni friends, you know, saying, you know, you know, what's wrong with you, Paul? Know, you trained to be Pharisee and you had a good thing going and and why you know why did you lose all that why did you want to live like this you know like a man who is on the run going through things losing possessions and you know why 
So, so this is the only explanation, right? Paul says that hey, this is this is the reality. Okay, but practically speaking, you know, in our in our own situations, maybe at home and uh, and all that, you know, to the extent that we can explain, right? Explain the reason for our action. Explain the reason for our uh, the intention for our decisions and so on. You know, the the our logic and reasoning, you know, is based on uh, on what 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 God has said. So, to the extent that we can explain, we can explain. Hmm. Right? Uh, we and we should, right? Because the thing is, if we stonewall them, saying, "Okay, this is how it is." Um, they're going to be. Uh, they're going to be thinking. You know why? Why is this person behaving weirdly? You know, mm. am, you know, am, am I not concerned? And it could be, like it can come from a place of concern and sincerity. But of course, the set of values are different, right? So, so it's good to explain. You know, hey, this is where I'm coming from, right? And uh, explain it in love and present the truth in love and say, this is where I'm coming from. This is the reason. So, can you can you give me an opportunity, right? Can we do this, especially when it's a joint decision or uh, a decision which involves uh, maybe a significant decision, you know, at the crossroads of something and then a decision and pulling in two directions because, you know, a bunch of people want to do it in a certain way. And this is the way the world does it. This is the culture of the world. This is worldly wisdom. And so why should we know? So to the extent that that line of thinking or way uh, even that wisdom does not, if it, to the extent that it does not contradict with the word of God, mm -hmm. to the extent that it does not contradict the truth, we can definitely go ahead. We can do it, right? But the problem is when it's when it comes mixed, and it comes mixed in, you know, there's a little bit of truth, little bit of compromise, and all that. So that is when we we really need to draw the line and and say, hey, this is this is my heart, you know, can can you respect it? This is my heart. And um, yeah, so that is where we can, because sometimes we we cannot go beyond that, you know, right? Uh, let's say, uh, like even in professional settings, sometimes you know we can we cannot override authority, but we can do it, <clears throat> do what we can do, which is in our realm of authority, yeah. uh, to the extent, or even in a like a covenant relationship, like a marriage, and uh, and so on, you know, to the extent that. Uh, maybe because of God's, you know, what God says as design and and all that. So the the you know how authority flows and so <clears throat> to the extent that we can, we yeah. we explain and leave it and then. But we also know that God takes care beyond that, you know, because you've tried your, you've given your best, you've you've stated yeah. your case, and and you explained the stand and you've honored, right? Honored the person, honored the you know the, the authority structure, everything you've done, everything. Mm -hmm. And beyond that, we can leave it to the sovereignty of God, saying, "Okay, this is my heart, God." But then, you know, you take care. We can do that. Right? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pastor. Right. Right. Sure. Okay. So I guess uh, that's all we have time for today. So we'll stop here and continue with uh, chapter five um, in our next class. Right. Okay. Thank you so much. God bless. Bye-bye.